Yeah, and 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 I was um, I, I actually want to back you up a little bit because this one thing that you touched upon earlier um, in relation to um, uh, secret societies and how um, these institutions uh, can be potentially uh, used or um, entered by uh, both types of, of human beings both psychopaths and, yeah. and and normal human beings um and and it's actually a little bit the same with wall street i would like for your comment on that because if you if you view wall street depending on who is actually watching that movie it will have two different uh messages yes uh and and you see this extremely well in Kind of the follow-up to Wall Street, not not the 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 new one, but actually uh, the movie Boiler Room, where you seen. where you have some of these uh, financial traders are sitting in a social uh, gathering and they are actually watching Wall Street, quoting it as if it's a Bible. Yes. So, so my yes. my point is that to some people, to to those inclined to that way of thinking that movie is actually not a uh, moral fable on the contrary it's a teaching device yes and that happens that's that's a very interesting human human trait not only regard pathologies and negative behavior and justifying negative behavior i know people who are like recovered alcoholics who watch movies like you know clean and sober and watch movies about people who know, like or drug addicts will watch movies like drugstore cowboy and they'll almost like you know it becomes almost like a canon to them it becomes almost like a biblical version of their own lives on the big screen this it's this it becomes sort of this uh you know this sort of narrative this sort of like it's, it's almost semi-autobiotic autobiographical and and I find that very interesting that people develop an interest in something and suddenly they want to watch movies about it and even if it's something like they have a problem with drugs they want to watch movies about drugs they have a problem with alcohol that they have a problem with sex the same thing it's a very interesting human trait and I don't think I fully understand what the what the the thrust is behind it but it's 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 that's what you were talking about. These guys are watching the Wall Street movie as if it was sort of their a primer. That was their mission statement. That was their uh, that was their their Quran. You know, it, it, to, to follow the liver, the code of living for them to live by. Yes, it is. But you you see that in all kinds of things. It's a very very strange human uh, trait. But but isn't that very much linked to the whole uh, idea about? Um humans telling only stories that are about humans and about the human condition and the the psychodynamics of the human condition i was uh, amazed at well i've been following some of the whole uh, current gender wars and the portraying of um, of uh, well i think you would maybe put them in the category of psychopathic females um, one of the things that that, that uh, I found funny was that you have that uh, traditional Irish uh, um, image of uh, of that demon woman thing. What? The Leanne and she. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's as if this is something that's been there always. This is not oh, yes. a new phenomenon, and 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 this is very much also related to you were touching upon. Uh, the story of uh, of Bram Stoker and vampirism. Henry Irving, yeah. Um, it's it's as if it's the same players. Yeah, it's the same players, and it's a and it's a constant need as as humans, you know, move through history that they need to put a I don't know an allegorical tag upon it you know there's it's always been there it's it has always been this sort of need you see human beings will go through ex extraordinary lengths not to confront their faults the, the you know this is this is a big issue with with human beings i don't know how long this has been around but it's been around you know hundreds of years at least human beings would rather go into madness or, or rather go into self-destruction than actually come to terms with their with their shadow that they, they will they will go to extraordinary lengths to uh, to deny that to 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 not accept it 
So you could have a situation where, like, I, this is one a big aspect of my work with psychopaths, and this is why I'm glad when, when I first started to deal with the issue of psychopaths, I didn't deal with it through writing, I didn't deal with it through reading, I dealt with it, or even through therapy, I dealt with it through my art and through my creativity and through paintings, and that really was a blessing for me because that allowed me to realize that this is a this is a, this is a very important journey that one must take in their personal development you know and this is why a lot of people who've been affected by psychopaths one in the workplace say like a really crazy psychopathic boss or a politician or a relationship it's that they, they, they come out extremely angry extremely driven and the basic attitude is then that everybody who's ever wronged them in their life or is ever going to wrong them in the future is a psychopath and this is extremely wrong because this is not how you should approach, approach the issue because it's ultimately self-destructive and that's also part of the shadow they won't use they won't use the experience to look at themselves in the mirror and say to themselves well what is it about me that brought this experience into my life because I can tell you for a fact I can tell you this is absolutely true Jacob nobody has met a, encountered a psychopath by accident <laughs> nobody it's you know okay you, it's it's not you know I'm talking about in a personal one to one situation what regards a, a dictator or a despot that's a different thing altogether but nobody when the demon has knocked at the door right and you have the choice to open or close that door and you not coming to terms with that you will never become sane again you will always carry within you an element of uh, pollution a psychological pollution that was left from the experience you have to come to terms with the fact just like when the vampire knocks at the door in, a, in the vampire novel you have a choice to let him in or not just like when the devil knocks at the door you have the choice and people rather than coming to terms with that that, that, that they brought this on themselves to a degree now you know they not a completely their fault until they realize that they haven't partaken in a symbiotic kind of ballet or a symbiotic tango of host and parasite of you know positive and negative you know everything is dualistic and everything is symbiotic in this in terms of psychology as well that they will never recover from this now my own issues i'm not going to go into what led me to this but it basically comes from my family background that's where it really began but i'm not going to go into details oh. but it was a it's this has been a lifelong process for me to try and deal with this and then i realized that every single other psychopathic individual who whom i encountered in business or in the music industry or just as a friendship were nothing more than a a reworking of the original initial psychopathic experience which I hadn't processed in a healthy or in a logical manner and it wasn't until I did that that it all up and I, I never had the problem ever again and I was so glad that I had things like music and art to get me through that because it wasn't done through a right a left brain process it was done through a, re a right brain process and then I went into the study afterwards and it made an awful lot more sense to me so that's why this is like one of the things and I still get a lot of emails and a lot of flack about this how can people say to me how can you say that encountering a psychopath is a positive experience they, they just don't get it they just don't want to accept they want to stay in a, it, it's an infantilism and they want to stay in a state of eternal blame or eternal victimhood they do not want to grow from the experience and this is why I believe it's an evolutionary experience and I'm talking about evolution and not, not only in the Darwinian sense I'm talking about evolution with capital letters right across you know spiritual psychological you name it every other way this if you this is the whole thing if you don't learn from a mistake you're condemned to repeat them and this this is what the psychopathic experience is and this is what it represents in every way and this is where allegory and metaphor of things like vampires and werewolves come from people in the past were just like people today they did not want to come to terms with the with the shadow part of themselves which tr attracted this 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 uh, aspect the psychopath or the psychopathic uh, experience into their consciousness and that's where my work differs quite differently from many others i want people to know that